You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. Warning. Vulgarity awaits. So Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel have a decent amount of fairly mediocre to objectively awful shock elemental weapons. Now, most of the bad shock weapons usually just become obsolete as you play through the game. While these guns may be okay earlier on in Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, you're going to find a slew of better or more practical options out there for you to choose from. Other weapons are just goddamn awful, though. Usually, it's either some kind of gimmick that ends up nerfing the gun into oblivion. In other cases, it's just got inferior stats to weapons that are much easier to obtain or is overall very difficult to use properly. Now, this video may include some shock elemental only guns and weapons that you yourself may like. You're not going to find anything like the Thunderball Fists or Twister here, but you may find some weapons on this list that you like to experiment with from time to time. However, for the most part, I would say that a lot of these guns are weapons that you're going to have to go out of your way to use. So, without further ado, these are the top 10 worst shock elemental only guns and weapons in Borderlands 2 and the pre sequel, starting now. Number 10 The Crit. There are probably some people that are really pissed that I put this gun on this list. Not to plug my own videos or anything, but I put the crit SMG on the best shock weapons list. The truth is, is that the crit is actually a pretty decent gun as far as stats and abilities go. Unlike the good touch or bad touch, the crit has improved base damage and also has a much improved critical hit modifier. As you can see from the gameplay here, it's actually dealing a lot of damage to these bandits on Maya. Plus, the other advantage of the crit is since it's also a moxie weapon, the player is healed for a portion of the damage dealt to enemies. Not only does this affect bullet or projectile based damage, but damage dealt from melee attacks as well as grenades will heal the player as well. Now, the critical flaw of the crit is that it will randomly drop out of the player's hand while you reload it. In some cases, you will find that this barely occurs at all, and other times, it will seem like the crit is constantly falling out of your hands, and you're constantly picking it up again and getting shot by enemies in the process. This is honestly a shame, as the crit is actually a really good weapon and is inhibited by this ridiculous gimmick. The other thing is that your mileage may vary with this weapon. Sometimes you're not going to have any problems like you're seeing in this video, while other times you're going to be constantly having problems. I suppose it should also be mentioned that the critical fail side quest that you have to complete in order to get this gun is a pain in the ass. If you're playing solo, you will die and you'll need to travel through the entire DLC just to get a gun that's been nerfed by a gimmick. Ultimately, fuck the crit. It's pretty shit. Number 9. The Yellow Jacket. This is a gun that I often go back and forth on quite a bit. On the one hand, it's actually a slight improvement over a standard E-Tech SMG from Hyperion. However, I think the major issue with the Yellow Jacket is, is its slow projectile speed. What the projectiles do is they start off slow at first and then they eventually gain enough speed to the point where they are no longer visible to the eye. It's actually a pretty cool effect in concept, however slow projectiles make distance combat almost impossible and can even make short range combat awkward as you have to anticipate where the slow projectiles are going to go. Another issue with the Yellow Jacket is that you can only get one from Jackenstein, who is a relatively difficult boss from the Hammerlock Game Hunt DLC for Borderlands 2. It's likely by the time that you actually fight Jackenstein to farm this weapon, you're going to have more powerful weapons already, especially if you've waited until the higher levels to play through some of the game's DLCs. All this said, I suppose some players could make the argument that the Yellow Jacket isn't completely horrible, and to a certain extent, I would agree with that sentiment. However, unless you're really into tweaking your builds and experimenting with the various guns that the game has to offer, why are you going out of your way to fight a relatively difficult boss just to acquire a weapon that's probably inferior to some of the weapons that you've already got? So again, maybe it's not totally horrible, but it is kind of shit compared to the other cool shit that you already probably have. Number 8. The Vault Thrower. 
So the Vault Thrower is a pretty unremarkable shock elemental rocket launcher from the pre-sequel. Something that's interesting to mention is that it is the pre-sequel's only blue rarity unique rocket launcher. All the rest are either legendary weapons or non-unique rarity weapons. And as far as stat boosts go, the Vault Thrower has better rocket speed, magazine size, elemental effect chance, as well as elemental effect damage. Damage wise, I would say the Vault Thrower is fairly subpar. Um, perhaps it's fairly decent early on when you don't have access to very many rocket launchers, but later on in the game, you're going to find that good rocket launchers are actually extremely common. Normally, you get the Vault Thrower upon completing the No Such Thing as a Free Launch side quest, which means you can get this weapon at around level 12 during your first playthrough. Um, I guess in that sense, it's okay if you really want a rocket launcher, but at higher level difficulties and at higher levels in general, there are so many other great rocket launchers that you can get in the pre-sequel. You've got the Bada Boom, the Kanada's Laser, the Mongol, and even the Nukem are going to be way better than this piece of shit. Ultimately guys, just avoid the Vault Thrower. Number 7, The Commerce. Now, the Commerce is actually pretty cool looking. The blue reflective weapon skin has this really unique effect that isn't replicated by many of the other guns and weapons in Borderlands 2. However, the Commerce's aesthetics don't make the weapon better or more practical to use. Like a few of the other weapons that are acquired from the various assassins in Southpaw Steam and Power, the Commerce becomes obsolete rather quickly. In normal mode, the weapon spawns at around level 8 or so, and there is a strong possibility that you'll be level 10 or 12 by the time you actually can get your hands on one. The other issue with the Commerce is that it's not a quest reward weapon, and instead has to be farmed from Assassin Watt specifically. The vastly superior legendary Emperor SMG comes in all elements and is significantly more powerful than the Commerce is. Plus as far as the player base goes, the Emperor SMG is one of the weaker SMGs available in the game. So given that the Commerce is somewhat difficult to obtain and isn't quite as good as other weapons that you can get, it's fairly obvious why no one farms for this particular gun. It's a shame that such a cool looking weapon becomes useless so quickly and the likelihood of you acquiring it is fairly low as well. I think the only person we can be sad for is the guy that designed this weapon skin. Not only is their work ultimately on a bad weapon, but it's also on a gun most players will never see. Number 6. The Vandergrafen it's sort of funny that the Commerce's skin in Borderlands 2 ends up appearing on another shitty weapon in the pre-sequel. While the Vandergrafen may actually look pretty cool, you're going to easily be able to find better weapons throughout the game. That's because some of the issues with the Commerce are shared by the Vandergrafen. The one thing 2K Australia managed to fix is that the Vandergrafen drops much more frequently and is a little more practical to acquire than the Commerce ever was. However, like the Commerce, it's a weapon that's just okay early on in the game. You may use it for the first couple of levels or so, but I don't really see anyone coming back here and farming this weapon much later on in the pre-sequel. I think you also have to consider that there are so many excellent lasers in the pre-sequel as well. You've got the Rosie, the Vibrapulse, the Absolute Zero, the Mining Laser, the Excalibastard, and that's just a few of the really good ones. To be honest, I've also never particularly liked Deadlift either, who is the boss that you have to kill in order to get this gun. The fact is, is that he's just a pain in the ass to fight on certain characters, and he can jump around the vertical arena and he can hide behind various walls and various platforms, which makes it really difficult to hit him, and it's pretty safe to say that if you go into fight for your life, you're screwed. So I guess while the Vandergrafen is more useful than the Commerce, I think it's pretty safe to say that most people would want literally any other weapon in the game if they had the choice. Number 5, the Boxy Gun. So the Boxy Gun is probably one of the most frustrating TDR SMGs in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Usually when you get a TDR SMG, you can fire one shot and quickly reload to throw the gun for a decent amount of damage. Unlike the vast majority of other TDR weapons, the Boxy Gun has a chance to explode in the character's hands while reloading. While I can't exactly say what determines the specific circumstances that contribute to the boxy gun exploding, I'm pretty sure that the less bullets you fire, the more likely the reload will blow up and hurt your character. 
This makes using the boxy gun very unintuitive, as 99.999% of the other TDR guns don't do this. Supposedly, Gearbox was thinking about originally implementing TDR weapons that were unreliable and had the chance to explode in the player's hands. Thank fuck that Gearbox didn't decide to do this. Otherwise, I think it would have made TDR pretty useless in the Borderlands 2. And besides, we've already got to contend with the fact that Bandit is almost entirely useless on higher level difficulties. The only other thing about this gun is that the bullets ricochet off of surfaces, which I guess is useful to someone somewhere, but most people aren't going to find bullet ricochet extremely useful. I guess if you want one of these, you can receive one from completing the round two of the Holodome DLC. I just hope you don't get one for completing the badass round, because that would suck. Number four, the lightning bolt. Now, the lightning bolt may be one of the more controversial choices on this list, because you could confuse it with the chain lightning grenade mod. Before we go any further, the chain lightning grenade is actually pretty awesome and really useful. The lightning bolt, on the other hand, is a piece of shit. This grenade mod barely seems to deal any damage. I can throw this thing at enemies that are both slagged and not slagged, and the amount of damage I'm dealing is abysmal. Even some of the weaker enemies in the game end up using my entire stock of grenades that I'm carrying, and at most, I remove half of the enemy's health. Keep in mind I'm playing in Ultimate Vault Center mode, so the enemy regenerated through most of the damage I just dealt. Now, I get why people don't like the fastball grenade. It takes a certain amount of precision in order to hit enemies, where with most other grenade mods, you don't have to be quite as accurate. However, I think the lightning bolt might actually be more difficult to use than the fastball and doesn't deal anywhere near as much damage. I suppose someone would say that the lightning bolt is good because it can regenerate grenades. Well, so can the chain lightning, fireball, firestorm, and both versions of the magic missile. I don't know about you, but I would rather have all of those than this clusterfuck of a grenade. The only reason you should pick this thing up is if you don't have a means of regenerating grenades. Even then, you're going to have to constantly swap grenade mods, and no one wants to do that. Number three, the Chulane. Actually, the Chulane is a dual element hybrid shock and slag weapon that's primary element is slag, while its secondary element is shock. On the item card, it's listed as a slag weapon, so maybe I am cheating a little bit here, but I figured I'd include it anyway. It's sad because the Chulane actually has the potential to be a really good SMG. The slag plus shock element combo can prove to be pretty powerful. Your first couple shots deal damage from both elements, and once they're slagged, both elements will get improved damage. When you add in the B shield, shots from the Chulane can be pretty deadly for slagged enemies. Plus, because your ammo consumption is low, you're getting more efficient use of your ammo pool than you would if you were playing using a Florentine SMG and the B-Shield. Now, the blatantly obvious problem with the Chulane is the self-slag. In normal and true Vault Hunter mode, this results in double the damage you would normally take. However, in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, you're going to be taking three times the damage that you would normally take. And given that enemies can health get you in only three to four hits, do you really want them to be able to do that in just two? I guess Gearbox thought that the dual elements would be way too powerful. Uh, in Borderlands 1, both the Nemesis and the Tsunami were very powerful guns because of their dual element status. It's just a shame that the only dual element gun you can get from the base game is crippled by a gimmick. To get this gun, make sure you side with the Zaffords during the Clan War side quest for Borderlands 2. Number 2, The Storm. There has never been a more heinous crime perpetuated on the Borderlands community than the Storm Sniper Rifle. This sniper rifle is possibly one of the rarest and most dogshit sniper rifles in the entire game. Somehow, the Storm manages to be worse than the legendary Malawan Volcano, a gun that's already not quite as good as a purple Malawan sniper rifle with the Malawan barrel. How is this possible? Fuck if I know. The only thing that's special about the Storm are the mini novas and orbs it emits that shock targets that are great for dealing damage over time. The problem is, sniper rifles excel at two things in Borderlands 2. The first is dealing a fuck ton of damage in one shot, or two, the ability to deal a lot of DPS across multiple shots. 
Why the fuck would I want a sniper rifle that's good for dealing damage over time, let alone in the element that I least want a good damage over time for? The storm is easily one of the reasons that I think the player base started to get somewhat salty towards Gearbox. At the time, they released the much anticipated level cap increase to level 61, and they also announced the return of pearlescent weapons. So you could imagine that many in the community were super hyped. But then when they farmed the loot midgets only to get this piece of shit, that really pissed some people off. I guess in more modern times, you can struggle through Digistruct Peak, kill oh my god what the hell, and receive this storm as a reward. What a fucking joke. Whatever you do, avoid this storm. If you get one of these, try to block it out of your mind. I know it's hard, but just try it. But honestly though, I just wish Gearbox just made a better weapon considering how unbelievably rare the storm is and how unbelievably bad the storm is. Number one, the Min Min Lighter. What a boatload of ass! The Min Min Lighter is a fucking joke. The Min Min Lighter has horrendous fire rate and deals extremely low damage when fired like a regular weapon. This is on top of the fact that the Min Min Lighter's ammo consumption is way too high and the projectiles fired from the gun move extremely slowly. For those of you that have played Borderlands 2, the Min Min Lighter functions in a similar way to Gage's 1-2 boom ability for Death Trap. The idea being that if you shoot the orb, it will explode and deal some additional damage to enemies. The thing is, the rate you can fire these orbs is really low, and then you have to precisely pre-plan when the orb will get near the enemy that you're going to be shooting at. I guess the idea here is pretty neat, it's just the special effects on offer are very impractical and really unintuitive. Most players are going to pick up a legendary that would appear to be pretty sick, but is actually worse than some of the weapons they've already got. I guess we can thank the developers that the Min Min Lighter doesn't have a designated drop area. If you want my opinion though, that's actually pretty good as you won't have to experience the remorse that's involved with obtaining this weapon for the very first time. But I guess if you still want one of these pieces of shit, you can get one with the grinder in Concordia. All right, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. And as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.